Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, An Intergalactic Obliteration of the Cosmic Fine-Tuning Argument. In this video, we're going to be looking at cosmic fine-tuning and the Monty Hall fallacy. We're going to be going back to the cosmic fine-tuning argument as it originally stood and talking about how it makes some assumptions about probabilities and likelihood that commit the Monty Hall fallacy. What is the Monty Hall fallacy, you may ask? Well, if you're curious about it, you should check out my video in our series on Bayesian epistemology on the Monty Hall fallacy, but it's assuming that a process is random when it's not random or can't be shown to be. So, the cosmic fine-tuning argument is going to commit something of a Monty Hall equivocation. In the original cosmic fine-tuning argument, there's an equivocation between the value of a constant being fine-tuned and the value being unlikely. The argument once again commits the Monty Hall fallacy by equivocating these two concepts. We're going to see how this works in the objections to follow in this video. So, first off, talking about biology and cosmology. So, to understand this, we have to note another equivocation that's taking place. There's actually two arguments that are often shuffled together, but are actually very, very different. Some of these very high numbers arise from calculations about biological complexity, the odds of abiogenesis, basically biology starting, the beginning of life, are very low. These are not fine-tuned values in that we don't get only one shot per universe, and they're probabilities as opposed to finely tuned numbers. In fact, we get Googleplexes of chances on planets everywhere constantly. This is another argument, and I'm not going to get into it in too much depth here, other than to separate these values out from those cosmically fine-tuned constants that we're actually talking about in the cosmic fine-tuning argument. Now, with these claims disposed of, we're left with just fine-tuned values of cosmic constants. These are not probabilities, like the biological complexity odds. They are specific constants, which, if different by a small amount, would make life impossible. Note that this does not mean that they are unlikely, just very specific. Just because something is very specifically created doesn't mean that it's unlikely that it was created in that way. That's the main point of this whole video. We're going to look at it in a number of different ways. So first off, we're going to talk about fine-tuning and how fine-tuning is just a nonsense concept. In fact, it's extremely relative. So these constants are only fine-tuned from our perspective. Constants that seem only roughly tuned to us would seem finely tuned to larger intelligences, and similarly, our finely tuned constances would seem much more roughly tuned to intelligence much smaller. It's extremely relative to say that something is finely tuned versus roughly tuned. And then moving on to compare this to likelihoods and probabilities is extremely fallacious because it only creates that specific probability if it's from our perspective as something this size, where from the perspective of something much smaller, it would be much, much more likely. Then we're going to talk about a position in modal logic called fatalism and how the fatalist can get out of the cosmic fine-tuning argument just as easily as the modal realist, because the fatalist claims that there's only one way that the world can be. The actual world is the only possible world, that everything is logically necessary. And if this is true, all of the constants are in fact logically necessary, and just as necessary as any law of logic. For the fatalist, the cosmic fine-tuning argument is a moot point. Then we're going to talk about the constants of math. So mathematical constants are infinitely more finely tuned than anything we find in cosmology. And yet if they were different, the universe would be impossible, nay nonsensical. That does not make them infinitely unlikely, though. It doesn't mean that there's some probability in their being determined, nor does it mean that there's some design in their being determined. Similarly, the laws of logic and the laws of math are going to fall in the same category. Once again, they're arguably infinitely finely tuned. And without them, the entire universe, including life, would be inconceivable. But this does not mean that they're infinitely unlikely. Just because something is extremely specific does not mean that it is unlikely or else designed. 
So first we're going to talk about biology. So Fred Hoyle calculates the chances of forming enzymes at around 1 in 10 to the 4,000th. Note that this is importantly different from our other constants in two ways. First, it is not a constant of the universe. We have plenty of planets and time to form enzymes, as opposed to one universe to get the cosmic constants right. It's one thing to say that there's billions of planets to look at where we might have those chances of hitting 1 in 10 to the 40th, and it's another thing to say that we have only one shot, one universe to get it right. Whether or not there are enough planets to form those enzymes and enough time and enough chances is another argument. It's an argument about biological complexity and abiogenesis, and it's not one that we're getting into here. The point is that it's importantly different from the cosmic fine-tuning argument. It's not a fine-tuned value, it's a probability, and it's not one we get one shot for the universe, it's one that there are many shots for. Second, as we mentioned, it's a probability instead of a fine-tuned constant. It's something that Hoyle himself calculated on his own, and it's up for dispute. It's not a generally agreed-upon constant, as many of the cosmic constants, in fact, are. Once again, whether or not we can reach enough chances to get this probability is a separate argument. The point is, it's something very, very different from the cosmic fine-tuning argument, and it shouldn't be lumped in the same boat with them. Now, let's talk about how fine-tuning is relative. So, if we have fine-tuned constants, that means we have to have rough-tuned constants, or all constants are else fine-tuned. Roughly-tuned constants are constants of the universe that could differ by a large amount and still allow for life. So, imagine some constant u, which is roughly-tuned. It could differ by a factor of 100,000 and still allow for life. Say that u is equal to about 138 million meters per second. It seems that such a constant would provide no reason to believe that the universe was designed, as it could have been very different, and the universe might still have sustained life. If we're saying by the cosmic fine-tuning argument that because something is finely tuned, that means it provides us a reason that the universe sustained life. If all our constants were in fact roughly tuned, then there's no reason for us to believe that the universe was so designed. But now imagine that there is a consciousness, a being, that's one quintillion times larger than humans are. Such a being might have a unit comparable to a meter, which is about one quintillion times larger than ours. Such a being would see our constant u as fine-tuned, as it's very, very small quintillion meters per second. And the universe could not support life if it was different by a factor of 10 to the minus 13th. That's something very small to such a being. The problem is that this seems to make the idea of fine-tuning just be nonsensical and excessively relative. That something is fine-tuning to one person but not fine-tuned to another seems to just break the law of the excluded middle, that something can't be both fine-tuned and not fine-tuned, rather the law of non-contradiction. Similarly, one could imagine a being that experienced the universe much slower than we do. For such a being, once again, you would seem finely tuned, as their seconds would look very different than ours. In other way, beings that were significantly smaller than we are would not see anything we saw as finely tuned. Note that we are talking about consciousness. So even if biologically something can't exist that's a quintillion times smaller than we are, that doesn't matter, because if there's a consciousness that can exist that small and measures things in units that small, that's all that matters. It's just a thinking mind. In fact, if you measure anything in large enough units, it would look fine-tuned when in fact it is not. The whole concept of fine-tuning is dependent on the units that we're using. Units being generally arbitrary based on what size you are, and coming from very ridiculous histories quite often, make the concept of fine-tuning equally arbitrary. The only reason something seems fine-tuned is the units that we use to distinguish it. Clearly you can't be both fine and rough-tuned, but it seems to be. Which as noted, breaks the law of non-contradiction. Furthermore, it seems strange that an argument could be sound using one set of units, but unsound using another. 
This seems to be extremely problematic for our conception of fine-tuning and the cosmic fine-tuning argument as a whole. Basically, therefore, any given constant being claimed to be fine-tuned is simply an arbitrary matter of perspective, as it might be roughly tuned from another perspective. Therefore, there's no reason for us to think that any constant is actually fine-tuned, because they all are simply dependent on the units that we use to express them. If we really wanted to make things seem fine-tuned, we could just use really big units. And if we wanted to make things seem really roughly tuned, we could make up a new really, 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 really small unit that would make everything seem very roughly tuned. Now, on to fatalism. So, the cosmic fine-tuning argument will not trouble the fatalist any more than it will trouble the modal realist. For the fatalist, everything is necessary, as there's only one possible world, namely the actual world. All things were determined, and there's no way that they could have been otherwise. No matter how unlikely anything is, it is as certain as any logical or mathematical truth. It's as certain as one equals one. All of the cosmic constants are what they are because they follow logically, not because they were designed, not because they were happening by random chance, Chance, but because they follow logically as much as any proof in mathematics for logic. The point is, fatalism may be an unappealing option to many, but the fatalist is never going to be convinced by the cosmic fine-tuning argument to believe in God. Now, the constants of math. So imagine you've discovered the following number in nature, 2.71828182849045. And it goes on and on and on. No matter how much you calculate, you cannot get it to be exact. But changing it even a small amount makes the calculations fail. It's an infinitely long decimal, but it never repeats. For those of you who are not aware, this is the number e. Like pi, it is irrational. It cannot be expressed as a ratio of two numbers. Therefore, the decimal goes on forever. And by our understanding of finely tuned, this is infinitely fine tuned. No matter what units we use for e, it's going to be infinitely fine tuned. Generally, it doesn't have units, so that shouldn't be a problem. Now, since this number is infinitely fine-tuned, the cosmic fine-tuning argument would have us believe that it is impossible that we're arrived at by chance. Therefore, it must have been designed. And yet, this would not make sense, because it wouldn't make sense to say that the ratio of the circumference to the, of a circle to its diameter, namely pi, is designed. It makes no more sense to say that E is designed, even though it's not a product of random chance and it's infinitely fine-tuned. It's, in fact, determined by the way that derivatives and integrals work. The point is that just because something is extremely specific does not mean that it must be designed, or else the product of random chance. E and pi can be discovered without a huge amount of complexity. They can be found and shown to be what they are without needing a large amount of complex other constants that must be designed. They simply fall out of the universe. They fall out of the way that math works. The point is that the argument creates a false dichotomy between constants that are finely tuned being produced randomly and being designed. It is possible that those constants were determined either by other less fine-tuned constants or by the laws of logic in math. We just haven't figured out how yet. Similarly, the laws of logic and math are going to be just as fine-tuned as our irrational constants, and more fine-tuned than any constant the cosmologists have ever discovered. They are required for the universe to exist, yet they need not be designed nor created randomly. Once again, these options are not exhaustive. And because we keep finding more and more constants that appear that aren't created randomly, nor are they designed, it seems to make sense that it's possible that some of the cosmic constants we're looking at don't fall into either category either. And assuming that they must fall into either category seems to create a false dichotomy when we in fact are seeing other constants that do fall into those other categories. So, for math, 1 plus 1 equals 2. Imagine that it were not the case that 1 plus 1 equals 2. Not in the sense of math, but in the sense of the real world. Imagine that it were greater by a factor of, let's say, 10 to the negative 5,000. Very, very small. But 
it was infinitely tuned up to that point. This would mean that whenever you brought two things together, something new would pop into being. Beyond breaking the laws of physics regarding conservation of matter and energy, this would completely destroy mathematics as we know it. Not only is this law more fine-tuned than any cosmic constant, it would do much worse to a universe if it were not true than simply not allow for the existence of life. Yet no one would claim that it must be the case that 1 plus 1 equals 2 was designed. The point is that just because something is very fine-tuned must be very specific to the degree of 10 to the negative 5,000 does not mean that it need be designed or be extremely unlikely. Logic is the same way, so take the law of identity for all p, p equals p. Any possible change to the law of identity makes the universe not merely uninhabitable but unconceivable. If anything is fine-tuned for life, this law is. If there were even a single case of the infinite possible number of propositions such that an object was not the same as itself, Nothing coherent could be thought again. All proofs would be invalidated, yet surely the fine-tuning of this law for the argument has nothing to do with design or probability. It simply falls out of our understandings of basic logic. The point here, once again, just because something is specific and must be finely tuned across all objects of the universe, does not mean that it must be designed or else arrived at by random chance. It in fact can simply fall out of the laws and the rules and constraints of the universe. So, over and over again, we see that the cosmic fine-tuning argument commits the Monty Hall fallacy by assuming that simply because something is very specific that it is unlikely. It assumes that the only options are that these constants were random or designed when many other options are, in fact, available. So that was the Monty Hall fallacy in the cosmic fine-tuning argument. Next up, we're going to be looking at the life as we know it objection, and then we're going to move on to the confirmation fine-tuning argument and some objections to that, as well as some general objections to both kinds of arguments. Watch this video and more here at carnades.org, and stay skeptical, everybody.